one line of code and create this cool effect and you can go savage with it? Stay tuned and you will find out. This is one of Indie and my mission is to one up your game. I will show you right away one of the best and easiest functions in Game Maker and it is so much fun to do. I stumbled on this one actually by accident and wanted to share it with you. So let's get started right away. How's it called? Effect create below and effect create above. The main difference is that one creates the effects on top above all the instances and the other one below. So what can this magic function actually do? So that you can create instantly effects like explosions, do some firework, have a blast ring or let it rain. As you can imagine now, it is quite powerful, but you will see it's very simple to use and you can spam it like crazy. What exactly is it? Well, technically it is an inbuilt particle emitter in Game Maker Studio that is very efficient in resource management. I will do an in-depth particle emitter video in the future, but here all you need to know is that a particle is something that is created by your graphics card and not your CPU. It is light in overall performance. Great. So how do we use that function? Basically everything you need to know is that it needs 5 input values to work. They are pretty self-explaining once you get to know them. The first input, what kind of effect do you want to have? Create a cloud or an explosion. Maybe you want some smoke or throw some sparks. It can do it all. And here you can see all the available effects starting with EF and underline. Some are very useful and some are like the star. They are special. So special that I can't imagine a useful application. Second and third input, X and Y. In Game Maker positioning is on a grid. Here you will see a professionally made image by some really gifted artist how this looks like. Mm, beautiful. Basically, X and Y start from the zero at the top left corner. X is the position on the horizontal axis and Y is the vertical axis. And that's it. Fourth input, size. How big you want the effect to be? You can only use a value between zero and two. Two being the biggest size. And yes, you guessed it right. Zero being still quite big. The effect will be bigger or smaller depending on that number. Fifth input, color. Basically the color of the effect to be. You can choose one predefined color, show it here. Or you can build your own custom, but they are in a GML raw format. On this site in the description below, you can find a very helpful color converter application. And this is how you do it. Let's set it up and see some action. For testing purposes, I created one test object, I am tester, and that sits in the room on the most top left corner and waits in its step event for some command. Here, a left mouse click to do a single burst. A red blast ring is what I want to do. So let's set it up. I write down effect create above. Put EF ring as my first input, second and third input for X and Y are mouse X and mouse Y because I want it to be created on the position of my mouse when I click. Let's give it an input for size well, in 0.5, set a red color with C red. Bueno, we are finished here. Well, and that's pretty much it. We can test it right away. I prepared a little demonstration here how you can use the function in other ways in your game. The ring effect appears when you hit an enemy. Smoke comes from a chimney of a house. A robot is throwing sparks when it is damaged. Something explodes. Are the best effect ever? Stars. If you are unsure when to use this function, just check out some games that use a lot of these effects themselves. One great reference for learning how to design a cool game is Dead Cells, a beautiful hybrid pixel art game. Here you can see the ring effect being used quite often. They spam it. But it doesn't seem to be totally overwhelming. Now you can do that too. But wait a minute. What about rain and snow? This is a little trickier. You may have guessed that it doesn't make any sense to put it on one point like the other ones I already showed you. Well, rain needs to be constantly created or emitted along the x-axis on top. And that's the secret. I know. Mind blow. So let's go again into the step event and set up some minor tweaks. The Y value is easy, the highest top value and starting point is always 0, so Y is equal to 0. But the X axis is lots of numbers, which range from 0 to the end of the screen or the camera is set. So what do we do here? Well, we just define a range and just randomize all the time one variable for the X in there. Let's say from 0 to 900. I'll call mine totally random. As you can imagine, the value of totally random will be now assigned every step 60 times per second or whichever room speed you have just set in your options. Now put in EF rain 
only random for x, 0 for y, 1 for the size and see blue for color into the effect function. Voila! And that's it. Press the magic F5 button, run and check it out. And now I want you to try the same with snow. I just wait here until you are finished. I have time. You see what you can do with one simple function. And it is of course a bit limited, but has lots of potential for quick and easy to implement effects. And by the way, I just freshly finished this handcrafted tile set and I'm quite satisfied how it looks. So if you're thinking, ooh, this is nice, you can get it instantly on my Patreon now. If you enjoy this content, consider subscribing because I do upload two videos a week. In need of some pixel art for your game? Get my unique assets at Patreon or itch.io. Let me know what you think in the comment section and see you next time.